All right. So we will now talk about um, connective tissue. So for the purpose of this video, I'll focus on connective tissue proper. Remember connective tissue has you three different elements. There is what we call connective tissue proper, which we further subclassify into loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. The dense connective tissue you further subclassify again into uh, irregular and regular. Then under connective tissue, we we'll also talk about structural connective tissue, which we we'll do in a separate talk, which will be bone and cartilage. Then we we'll also have fluid connective tissue where we talk about uh, your blood as well as your, your lymph, right? And um, this connective tissue actually stems from embryology. Remember, we have embryonic connective tissue, which comes from mesoderm. Um, even though this embryonic um, connective tissue comes from mesoderm, we have certain regions where it's going to come from your neural crest cells. And um, for, for now, we'll just talk about loose connective tissue and um, dense connective tissue, right? So your loose connective tissue, it's um, quite cellular. Uh, it is an equal proportion of cells. It is an equal proportion of ground matrix as well as the fibers. What kind of fibers do you have within your loose connective tissue? You're going to have collagen fibers. You're going to have reticular fibers, which are just uh, type three collagen fibers. Then you also expect to have elastic fibers, right? Then when it's dense connective tissue, you you have more fibers than, than cells. Right? So there's a higher proportion of fibers within your connective tissue matrix as compared to the cells, right? So this dense connective tissue, you, you have a regular dense connective tissue, then you have irregular dense connective tissue. Um, a, a classic example of regular dense connective tissue where you want things to move in one orientation or one direction, you expect this to be in your muscle tendons, whereas the capsule that encircles most organs, it's more likely going to be dense irregular connective tissue because when the organ then expands, you need to have the organ expanding in more than one direction because an organ is not going to be straight. It's going to have some form of shape that it takes um, as well as the, the dermis. The dermis that is below your epidermis. Epidermis is the epithelium. Then the dermis is your connective tissue, right? This dermis, since you can slide your skin in more than one direction, that simply means that you're going to have, you're going to have um, that dermis being uh, irregular dense connective tissue. So you can be able to, move it in more than one direction because the moment you have a dermis that is um, a regular connective tissue, that means that you're not going to be able to move it uh, in more than one direction. That means you're going to have a skin that is probably not going to be able to um, slide in more than um, one given direction, right? So for the cellular component that you have in your connective tissue, you're going to have what we call permanent or resident cells of connective tissue then we have your wandering cells. So normally we give a reference to the five permanent cells or your five resident cells, which is your fibroblasts, your macrophages, your adipocytes, then the mast cells. Then you also talk about your embryonic stem cells is the fifth one. Any other cell that you then see in connective tissue that is going to be the wandering cells or the non-resident cells of connective tissue. Right. So the permanent ones, I'll give a rundown again. That's the fibroblast, the macrophage, the adipocyte, the mast cell, then the embryonic stem cell. Your fibroblast is the most abundant cell in connective tissue as well as your macrophages. Macrophages, remember, they're just monocytes that have left the blood to invade your connective tissue spaces. Then the rest of the cells are going to be wandering cells. For example, you talk about leukocytes, you name them. Right. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to give a rundown of a few things. For example, I'll talk about the fibroblast. So these are the ones that secrete the ground substance, um, and they can actually mature to become chondroblasts that we're going to talk about in cartilage. Um, they are usually star, uh, they're star-shaped, but when they're inactive, they're spindle-shaped. So we talk about a fibroblast and a fibrocyte. The active one in this sense, the fibroblast, then the fibrocyte is inactive. The nucleus is large, it's ovoid, usually euchromatic, euchromatic signifying that this is a highly active cell as compared to one that is going to be heterochromatic, right? 
Um, in it, you form the fibrocyte, which is a resting. You expect to have a heterochromatic nucleus. You have less raphendoplasmic reticulum. Then you also uh, also expect less Golgi apparatus since they are not secreted at the time given. Right. Then your plasma cells, they're going to give an eccentric nucleus. Eccentric meaning that it's going to be around the center. It's not going to be uh, central as compared to the mast cells that you see. So mast cells, they exhibit what we call metachromasia. Metachromasia is the phenomenon where you now expect your mast cells to be able to change the color of a basic dye. For example, your toluid in blue, you can change that basic dye from the blue color to a red color. That's metachromasia. You are now are uh, changing the color of a basic dye, right? And then we also talk about adipose tissue where there's brown fat and white fat. Uh, brown fat is mostly babies. It's for thermogenesis, heat production. Uh, if you've done biochemists by now, uh, you basically skip that um, electron transport chain in your mitochondria. You use the protein uncoupling one. That's the one that is going to produce the heat. The cells are going to be multilocular as compared to your white fat, which is the adult fat, where you expect to have unilocular uh, unilocular adipocytes. Uh, they're signet ring in shape. The, the adipocytes for white white fat, um, they're mainly for storage of, um, uh, of energy. And they make up about 20% of body weight, if you remember your physiology. But um, it will also be key to remember that um, you... Your, your, to remember your glucose um, homeostasis or your glucose metabolism because it involves these um, it, it involves these your uh, your your adipocytes or basically fat so glucose metabolism uh, and fat metabolism right so now a bit of pictures so this is a picture that is simply showing us um, loose and um, dense irregular connective tissue. So this, this here is glandular epithelium here. Um, we've done a separate video on epithelium. There is glandular epithelium. Uh, this is dense irregular connective tissue. You can see that um, these are moving in different spatial directions. Right. Um, this again, this is epithelium. Um, but I can appreciate that. I remember I said below epithelium, you expect lamina propria. Maybe there's a different stain, but this here will be connective tissue. Uh, that's um, that's the lamina propria there. Right. This stays epithelium on this side, some goblet cells. There's epithelium on this side again. Right. And um, when you now look at the cellular component that you have in between there, since you now have intercellular spaces, this is no longer epithelium. This is now going to be your connective tissue. Right. So the, inter the, the space there, this is now uh, connective tissue. Uh, some of them are going to be macrophages. For example, this cell here that you see with a bean-shaped nucleus, that's, um, that's monocyte slash macrophage. Then you also expect um, uh, plasma cells. You expect, you name them. You expect to see those kind of cells there. Right. Okay. Um, this here is um, just a picture which um, I want you to see something that is regular in arrangement. So this is um, some form of um, dense regular connective tissue. This is what you expect to see for a tendon. That's actually a picture of a tendon, by the way. This slide here. Right. That's a tendon. There's dense regular connective tissue. Right. That's a tendon again here, yeah, bottom left. Um, just that it's now a longitudinal section. Um, this here again is that a tendon that's just cross section, but there's some form of regularity uh, in those pictures. Um, this is a picture of elastic fibers. I just want you to appreciate uh, how elastic fibers stain when you then do your um, your your fluid connective tissue. You talk about blood vessels where you expect a tunic media that is going to have elastic fibers. Um, interestingly, this year, um, and I, I, I've known this the longest. This is a picture from an elastic artery, uh, your aorta. Right. So, yeah, that's just about it. Um, you can appreciate your 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 fibroblasts. Right. So that's um, this is a picture that is giving us fibroblasts. I think you can see um the spindle uh the spindle shape of the of the nucleus there, right? Okay. 
um, this year, this is um, this is a bone marrow tissue where we see the, the adipose tissue, the white dots there. Then we also have the black dots there. Um, this is just a picture that I would want you to know that this is a bone marrow tissue uh, where when you do your blood histology or your blood physiology, you expect to see such um, for, for that.